Let's upgrade the firmware on this CR-10. I was going to make some modifications to my CR-10, but then I quickly realized that the version of Marlin that it runs won't support a lot of the features that I want to add. So I thought, if I'm going to upgrade the firmware anyway, I might as well make a video on it. But here's the catch. Creality doesn't put a bootloader on their board, so you can't interact with the firmware directly via USB. You have to add a bootloader, so you're going to need an ISP. That's a serial programmer. Fortunately, we should be able to use an Arduino Uno, cable up to the board, add a bootloader, and then we can update the firmware. You only have to add this bootloader once, so let's get started. First, we need to turn our Uno board into an ISP programmer. This is what we'll use to program the bootloader. So cable it up USB to your PC. If you don't have it already, go out and grab the Arduino IDE. You want the Windows installer, link in the description below. I already have it, so we'll open the IDE. You want to go to the Tools menu. Make sure you're on the correct COM port. This one is COM port 11. Go to File, Examples, Arduino ISP. Click Arduino ISP. This will open up the example sketch to turn your Uno into an ISP programmer. Click Upload. The upload is complete. Now you can remove the USB cable from your Uno board. Now that we have our Uno board configured as an ISP serial programmer, we can now open up the CR10 control box, use jumpers to connect to the Melzi board, then we can load the bootloader, then we can load the firmware. You only have to load the bootloader once. After this, you should be able to update the firmware whenever you like. The Melzi board that is inside the CR10 is currently compatible with the Marlin versions. Remove the power cable from the control box and the two pinned cables. You want to remove these five screws on the control box. You can leave the feet on. Facing the front of the control box, you want to move to the right side and remove these four screws to take out the power supply. Just gently slide the power supply out because some of these cables are kind of short. You don't want to pull any of them. We can just set it aside. Here's what the main board looks like. You probably won't have to take your board outside the box to do this modification, but I'm going to because it's going to be really hard to film if I don't. It's just a couple of screws. You are going to need five female to female jumpers for this and one female to male jumper. The ISP plugs on the Uno board and the Melzi CR10 board are identical, meaning they'll be pin for pin. Starting in the top right, we have VCC, and it'll be hooked up in the top right, VCC. The top middle pin is MOSI, and that'll be hooked up to the top middle pin, MOSI. The top right pin is ground. It'll be hooked up to the top right pin ground. The bottom left pin is MISO. That goes to the bottom left pin MISO. And the bottom middle pin is SCK. And it goes to the bottom middle pin SCK. On the UNO, the bottom right pin will be left empty, that's the reset pin. But on the Melzi, your bottom right pin will be cabled to the number 10 digital pin on the Uno. So we'll take our female to male jumper, hook up the reset pin on the Melzi, and hook it into pin 10 on the Uno. I don't want to belabor this point, but I want to make sure everybody gets this right the first time, because you can harm your board. Everything is one-to-one -one except for the reset pin. VCC to VCC, MOSI to MOSI, ground to ground, MISO to MISO, SCK to SCK, 
The only thing that's different on the reset pin on the Uno, there's nothing plugged in. On the reset pin on the Melzi, it goes all the way to digital pin number 10 on the Uno. Okay, there's the wiring. The only other thing you need to worry about on your Melzi is you need to move this jumper over to USB. This will allow your Melzi board to be powered by the USB cable while we program. A quick disclaimer before you flash your Melzi board. This is going to get rid of everything that's on the board currently, and you won't be able to put anything back on because you don't have a bootloader. So double and triple check all your connections and make sure nothing comes loose during this process. I don't want anyone to ruin their board, and don't do this unless you're absolutely sure that you know what you're doing. Okay, here we go. Now we need to go out and grab the Sanguino board plugin for our Arduino IDE. Link in the description. Grab the zip file. Downloads. Extract all. Copy your Sanguino folder. Then we'll want to head to Documents. Arduino. Hardware. If the hardware folder isn't there, you can create one. Then right click and paste that folder. This should give us everything we need for a Sanguino board. If your IDE is still open, close it and reopen. We'll just use a blank sketch that works for our purposes. Once you're back in, go to Tools and confirm you have the Sanguino board. It's usually all the way at the bottom. There it is. The easiest way to tell what COM port your board is on when you plug it in is before you plug anything in, go to Tools and go to Ports. Note the ones that are listed here right now. Now we'll plug in our Melzi board via USB. Check your ports. Melzi is on COM14. And then we'll plug our UNO board in USB. Check your ports again. UNO board is on COM11. Go to Tools. Go to Boards. Make sure you're on the same Juino. Tools. Processor, make sure you have AT Mega 1284 16 megahertz selected. Tools, Programmer, make sure you have Arduino as ISP selected. Then finally, Tools, Burn Bootloader. It should be really quick, and you'll see Done Burning Bootloader at the bottom. Now we can uncable the USB from both boards to get rid of the power. And then we'll remove all of our jumper wires. Now we don't need the Uno. We can set that aside. Now you can plug the USB cable back into your Melzi. So right now the bootloader's on there, but we need some firmware. Go grab the newest version of the Marlin firmware. In my case it's 1.1.8. Downloads. Extract all, go into the Marlin folder, go into Marlin. We could configure this board manually just by going through the configuration.h and the configuration app.h files. Since the CR10 is so popular, someone has already created a configuration that works out of the box for it. Also, Marlin supports this board natively now. So all we have to do is go into example configurations, go into Creality, CR10 and copy all three of these files into the main Marlin folder. We'll up one, up one, up one, main Marlin folder, right click, paste. And then we'll replace the files in the destination. Now all you have to do is open up the Marlin INO file, select tools, your board is still going to be Sanguino. Your processor is still going to be AT Mega 1284 16MHz. Your port will stay the same, COM14 for the Melzi. And hit upload. Once the upload is complete, it's probably a good idea to head over to Prodderface and make sure you can still communicate with the board. COM14, 11.5200, connect. The board came back, everything's looking good. Now we can change our USB jumper back to voltage regulator. And I can put my board back in. Now my board's back in. We're going to carefully slide the power supply back in. Careful with those wires. 
Power supply is screwed back on. Now we can put the bottom back on. All five of those screws are back in. Now we can plug our pin cables back in. And we can plug in the power. We'll kick on the power switch. And if everything went successfully, you'll see the advertisement and Marlin 1.1.8. CR10 is ready. So let's try an auto hoe. Everything auto home successfully. Now we'll go in, prepare, preheat PLA. Make sure both the temperatures are rising like they should be. Hot end looks good. Heat bed looks good. Now we'll get some filament loaded. Everything's preheated and moving correctly. And now it's benchy time. And there you go, we have a new version of Marlin 1.1.8 that gives us all the new features that Marlin offers. And by the way, one of those is Linear Advanced. More on that a little later. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below. And as always, thanks for watching. Not too shabby.